Hi everyone! In this video, we'll learn how to set up the camera so that we can have a capture preview on the device. We take capture devices, use them to create capture inputs, provide the session with these inputs, and then save the result and capture outputs. Let's declare our methods to see the big picture. Setting up the capture session consists of four steps. Creating a capture session, configuring the necessary capture devices, creating inputs using the capture devices, and configuring a photo output object to process captured images. When we have the camera device ready, just create a layer to display the result on the screen. Capture session will start running when we have finished the configuration. Okay, let's get rid of errors by creating our methods. All right. Just copy the name of methods and view did load. Okay, build the app and see. Very good. We now need to implement the setup capture session method. Let's create an instance of AV capture session, assign it to a variable called capture session. All right, to use AV capture session, we need to import AV foundation at the top. The APIs we use is available in the AV foundation framework. All right, we now can use the AV capture session. Okay. Next, let's configure the session. We use the session preset property on capture session to specify the image quality and resolution we want. Hold option, then click on the property to see the description of it. All right, we want a full photo resolution. So we'll use AV capture session dot preset dot photo to preset the session for taking photo in full resolution. Okay. Now that we've created a AV capture session, we need to create the AV capture device object to represent the actual iOS devices cameras. Since iOS 10, we use discovery session property on AV capture device to find and monitor available capture devices. Use this class to find all available capture devices matching a specific device type, such as microphone or wide angle camera supported media types for capture. So the type of device is going to be the wide angle camera. It's suitable for general purpose use when we want to take a photo. And media type is going to be video. The camera position is undefined for now. All right. The next step is to find out the camera devices for taking photos by using device property on device discovery session variable. Since the camera app supports both front and back facing cameras, so we need to know the current device is used is front or back facing camera. We just check if the camera position is back, we store it into a variable, and also if the position is front. So we create two separate variables for storing the AV capture device objects, front and back, facing camera. And a variable called current device is used for storing the current device that is selected by the user. Okay, let's declare it above the view did load method. We're going to add the front camera and back camera properties. We'll be implementing the ability to change cameras later. The type is AV capture video because it represents the actual iOS devices cameras. All right, good. Let's go back to our method. Let's update the if else statement. With the cameras returned, we examine its position property to determine if it is a front facing or back facing camera so that we can get the front and back facing camera for taking photos. By default, the camera app uses the back facing camera when it's first started. We set the current device to the back facing camera. Okay, let's update the else statement when the camera position is front to determine which is the front camera. All right. Let's compile the project to get rid of errors. Very good. 
Now we can create capture device inputs, which take capture devices and connect them to our capture session. It can throw an error, so let's do catch syntax. We simply ensure that the device input exists for the current device. If not, we throw an error in the catch block. We create an instance of AV capture device input with the current device so that you can capture data from the device, then add it to the capture session. All right. OK. With the input device configured, we call add input method on the capture session variable to provide input to it. Up until this point, we've added all the necessary inputs to capture session. Now, we just need a way to get the necessary data out of our capture session. Let's add one more property to the class. The type is AV capture photo output. Okay, we now just configure photo output. Telling it to use the JPEG file format for its video codec. All right, let's configure it to use the JPEG encoder. All right. Then pass nil for completion handler. If that fails, just print the error on the console. OK, build the app. We get an error. Let's see. The current camera variable we declared is an optional variable. So we need to unwrap it. Then build the project again. We'll add photo output to the capture session later when we want to capture a still image. Good. We have now configured the AV capture session object and are ready to present the camera. The next step is to create a preview layer and start the session. OK, it's time to show what it captures on screen. Let's add a property to our class to support for displaying video. We use the AV Capture Video Preview layer to display video as it's being captured by an input device. The layer is then added to the views layer to display on the screen. We create an instance of AV Capture Video Preview using Capture Session as the parameter. OK. The preview layer object provides a property named Video Gravity. That indicates how the video preview is displayed. We want a full screen camera interface, so just set it to Resize Aspect Fill. OK. Then set its layers to have the portrait orientation. All right. OK. Next, let's update the frame for this layer to give a full screen camera interface. We just assign views frame to it. We add the preview layer to the view layers at index 0 to unhide the button. All right. Lastly, we call the start running method of the session to start capturing data. We can go back to view did load to keep track of our flow. Start running session is the final step. Let's compile and run the app on a real device. We should see the camera preview. Let's see. Very good. The camera button doesn't work yet. We'll capture a still image when the camera button is tapped in the next video. See you there.